Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming and Dragon's Dogma 2. Today we're talking about vocations, but the unique master's teachings. These are like ultimate skills that each and every vocation has. On mass, they're ridiculous. Most of them, if not all of them, you should have unlocked and equipped. But to get them, you need to do some really specific stuff. That's what this video is. A guide on how to unlock these ultimate skills and a little discussion about each one. So with all that said, let's get started. To let you know, to get a master's teaching actually functional, you need to have unlocked the vocation. So until you spend the discipline points to say unlock fighter, even though you never plan to play fighter, you won't be able to use the scroll given to you by the masters to then get the technique and then say give it to like your main pawn or something. So it's worth spending a little bit of discipline points to unlock all the vocations on any character. In any case, we're starting with a fighter. It is Righteous Fury. This rains a flurry of powerful blows on the target, dealing massive damage at great cost to stamina, which is a theme. Leaves the user vulnerable if the first strike misses, but as you can see, the fighter is using both hands to do this combo. It is basically the strongest DPS combo fighter has, and I would absolutely recommend you run it if you're playing a fighter. The fighting master is very obviously Lenat. He's a character you're going to have to interact with. And to get him to teach you the fighting technique, you just have to really get him to like you, which like I said, is kind of by doing the main story. At different points, he'll ask you to help the village of Melv, but it really comes together when you go away from Melv, progress some main story. And then at some point you're asked, go check on Melv, see how it's doing. You go back and it's under attack by this kind of poisoned dragon. You don't defeat the dragon, you just deal enough damage to get it to go away. After that's complete, just go speak with him and he'll really appreciate everything you've done to help defend and look after the town. At that point, we get the technique and as soon as you have fighter unlocked, you can use it and apply it to you or your pawn. Next up then, we have the archer. The Archer's Master teaching is Heavenly Shot. It fires this one ridiculous shot in exchange for all of the user's stamina. The arrow's potency is determined by the user's remaining stamina when it's actually loosed. So you don't need a full stamina bar to use this. And it allows for what is a potent burst that otherwise you don't really have, not to this level anyway. So if facing a monster that has a noticeable important weak point, I would strongly recommend you use this. To find the Master Archer though, you're going to need to come to the Sacred Arbor, which is like the Elf Village. As you can see, it's just northwest of the Malachite Forest, which is just northwest, pretty northwest, of Vernworth. There is a whole quest line you're going to need to do to earn the Master's trust though. Here in Vernworth, you're going to find this young elf that's kind of standing by the weapon seller. He really wants a human bow, so you can give him one or buy one from the weapon seller here and give him that, and with that he's going to go test and train with it. He gives you a quest to go meet with him just north of Trevo Mine, basically leading you to the Elven Village. You will need to be an archer to do this, so swap to that vocation if you aren't already, and just go show him how to fire at the targets, it's very easy. From there, you'll return to Vernworth and meet with him again, and he'll say, I want you to come with me to the trial. A new marker appears on a map, he leads you to the Elf Village, and instead of doing the trial, you find out that his sister and the sort of leader of the village's daughter has been kidnapped by an ogre. You agree to go help with that and go to a nearby cave marked on your map. By defeating the ogre or just saving the daughter in general, you'll earn the elves' trust. So much so that the father and leader of the elf village will really like you. And in fact, it turns out that's the archer master and he will give you the master's teaching for saving his daughter. Okay, so next on the list is mage. The problem with the mage master teaching is it's closely tied to the sorcerer master teaching that has two. So I'm going to talk about mage and sorcerer together, which means we're going to skip mage and go straight to thief for the moment. And thankfully thief's ultimate skill is really easy to get. The thief ultimate skill is formless faint. It enables them to evade all manner of attacks from hostile targets but consume stamina kind of passively while it's going. Naturally as soon as I unlocked this I was trying it and I never took it off. And then sure your stamina is draining slowly but you're literally iframing every attack which means you can attack without thinking and just focus on DPS which the thief is absolutely phenomenal at. So this is one of the best ultimate skills in the game Game, in my opinion. As part of the main story here in Vernworth, you're going to need to go to the Nameless Village, which is just the northeast. Here's the Nameless Village. As we enter the village, a strange merchant's going to tell you that there's nothing here for you. And as you work your way through the village, you're going to climb the hill to the main manor that's kind of run down. There's going to be a guy there saying, well, you did it, you found me. I'm the Thief Master. And because you found me, that proves you're the sickest thief around. Here's my master teaching. And he teaches you 
you Blades of the Pyre, which brings the daggers together to set them on fire, but instead blows you up and targets around and then provides a small fire buff for the weapon. This is not a good ability. You have to deal damage to yourself for a short fire buff and the damage that you get is not worth it compared to the other ways you can deal damage. This is basically a fake out. And to me, story-wise, this says, yeah, anyone that falls for this and gives up is not actually a true thief. As you can see on my map, just outside of the building to the northwest is the village depths entrance, which is kind of like a ladder leading underground. What you will find here is a really cool thief challenge. You need to avoid the swinging traps and pass through the area. The final challenge room is multiple of these bridges that you need to stand on one edge to kind of raise them up and sprint and jump across before it falls down while avoiding the swinging traps. When you actually get through this little challenge, you'll find a secret room at the end where a bunch of villagers are waiting, including that merchant that accosted you as you entered. Turns out he's the real thief master. I mean, look at him. Of course he is. By completing this trial, they will just give you the master's teaching and you'll have it unlocked from there. Chances are you'll do this as part of the main story though. So you might have known this one already. Next up on the list before we get to Mage and Sorcerer, is Warrior. This one's a bit more involved and actually I missed it for quite a while. Their master's teaching is Arc of Might. Channel every ounce of the user's strength into one almighty blow and consume all of the user's stamina when activated. In the case of a warrior, one big hit is a fantastic thing and if you can aim at a weak point, maximize the damage, of course that's even better. The warrior master is Baron, a beast run that lives actually in the human lands and has a lot of problems because of it. So even though he serves the Border Watch outpost, the first place that you actually go to at the start of the game. He doesn't stay there. He has his own camp, which is how you can miss him. It's actually here at Baron's Tent, just north of the town of Melv. As you work your way up the hill, instead you go through the side passage past the Moongrown Garden and find Baron's Tent. Do note that I had to come here at night for him to actually be here. I guess he's staying here at night. What he wants is three swords to equip his men. One-handed fighter swords are easy to come by, so you might have some, but you can actually just go to the Border Watch outpost, go to the commissionary merchant and buy three of them for pretty cheap. When you've done that, bring them to Baron and hand them in. Next, he needs an apprentice. So go to the main city of Vernworth and just kind of wander around the market area. As I was walking through the streets, the apprentice comes up to me and I just tell him about Baron. With that, we can return to Baron's tent. Baron asks you for some training to duel. You don't need to win, you just need to duel him. And during that duel, you'll be interrupted by a Cyclops attack on Baron's men. You investigate and find the Cyclops got away, but now Baron's got in trouble because people under his protection got hurt. Before he can be basically outcast though, you meet him at Baron's tent again and the Cyclops hunts you down and you defeat it. Baron at this point sees you as a true friend and gives you his sword. When you rest, he'll be gone. And where he will have moved to is just south of the checkpoint rest town to the west of Vernworth. Just beyond the actual border gate, you've got a little house called Baron's Childhood Home. That's where he's moved. And when you meet him there after doing all that, he teaches you the master's teaching. So certainly more involved than some of the other ones we've talked about. All right, so next we have Mage and Sorcerer together because they are intertwined. For Mage, Celestial Pian, Pion, which summons a wave of holy light that hastens both stamina recovery and speed of allies who touch it. That also reduces damage taken while you're in it. However, it consumes all of the caster's stamina as is a theme. Still incredibly potent and well worth running if you can have it on say a mage in the party, if not you. The problem with unlocking this is that you're going to actually need to complete a sorcerer storyline instead. And when you do that, you'll also be given this master's teaching at the same time, which is why we have to talk about the sorcerer ones right now. For the sorcerer, you have two master teachings. That is Meteoron, which was shown in the trailers, summoning a meteor shower, dealing ridiculous damage against a huge range of attack, but you will be held in place while using it and you cannot use quick spell to cast it quickly. Obviously, it's going to be more effective in a wider area where, you know, you can summon something like that. Then the other ultimate skill is Maelstorm, which is basically the summon Tornado, sending enemies flying up into the air and instantly killing them if you're in an open space and they're weak and small enough. You cannot move while encanting and you cannot quicken it with quick spell. Both of them are pretty damn good, although I prefer Meteoron out of the two of them. It all starts here in the checkpoint rest town west of Vernworth. In this house on the hill is an old sorcerer master. The problem is that he won't see anyone unless you're dressed in a fancy way. You're going to need the courtly attire. At this point of the game, you should have it. You can buy it for an ungodly amount of gold 
or you can literally just go pick it up in the Palace of Vernworth. There's a guest room up top and there's a chest in there that has the courtly attire so you can get it for completely free. So once you're wearing your courtly attire, go inside and speak with Mirrodin. He'll be after five specific tomes to then teach you the master's teaching. Problem here is that you actually need the same five tomes for the other sorcerer master teaching, which leads to the mage's master teaching. So you're gonna need two copies of them. Now, fortunately, you actually only need three of them for both, but I'll tell you about all five just so you can pick and choose. The easiest one to get though is here in Mirrodin's house. He's literally asking for a book he already owns. If you try to go upstairs and steal it, he'll know and fight you and that'll be it. So you have to go outside, climb the wall next to the house and leap to the balcony. And as you enter from the balcony, you've snuck in. Now you can steal the book, let there be light. And that's one of the three you're gonna need. If you're gonna use this one to give to both though, the little girl and the old man, you're gonna need to use forgery. So you can go to the little forgery shop that's here in town, give him the let there be light book for 6,000 gold, wait a full day or so, go back, collect it, and now you'll have two versions. One saying this is the fake one, and it'll be a misspelt version of the book. Forgeries can be handed to Mirrodin, the old man, whereas the real books have to be given to the little girl. I guess the idea is that the little girl wants to learn magic, so if you give her a fake book, it's useless, whereas the old man is just like a collector. Next, we have the Nation's Death Knell book, which can be found in a couple locations, like say the ruined fortress north of the ancient battleground, but there's another place you can get it, and there's where you're also gonna get another book for this quest, getting it all done pretty quick. If we have the starting point of Melv, and we're going up the main road, and we're coming east, and we've gone through the checkpoint, as you pass through the actual campground, instead of following the main road, you go on this side road leading uphill, you'll find an entrance to a cave, the Waterfall Cave. Inside the Waterfall Cave, is a Chimera boss fight, which is pretty awesome. But hidden above all that is a secret room with a chest where a lich will attack you when you open it. In that chest is Nation's Death Knell and also Howling Blizzard, two of the books you need. So it's well worth coming and doing this one, defeating the lich and getting the books, and now you have all the books you're gonna need. However, if you wanna know where book number four and five is, there is one that you can get in the Gracious Hands Vault here in Vernworth. As part of the main quest, you do a quest called the Cage Magistrate. You free him, but he doesn't wanna leave until you found a nice library for him to go use. So you find it in the slums doing a side quest to help find a lost boy. The lost boy is down in these vaults. So when you save the boy, you also find the vaults. You let the magistrate know about the vaults and then he goes there. And when you need these books, you can go speak with him and he'll just give you it. So that's four or five. The last one is really easy. It's found here in Melv just by the entrance. There's literally a merchant that sells it for like 5,000 gold named Dudley. As soon as you buy that book, he'll leave to Vernworth by the way. But yeah, that is five of the books. As a reminder, in the checkpoint rest town, you can do forgeries. So remember, you can create forgery second copies of these books, and you can give the fake ones to Mirrodin, he'll accept them. In any case, give the three books or three fake books ideally to Mirrodin, and he'll accept them, and then teach you his master teaching. But now it's time to talk about the other Sorcerer Mastery skill and the Mage Master skill you get from that. Here in Eni's home, there is a little girl that wants to learn magic. This is actually the daughter of Mirrodin. This home is found just north of Melv, and it's actually quite near the warrior teacher. Just further up the hill, you turn off the path and there's a house there. Here you'll find an old woman and a little girl. The little girl wants to learn magic and the old woman won't teach her. When the old woman leaves the house, you can then speak to the little girl and she'll ask you, can you find me these five books? It's the same five books that the other sorcerer master Mirrodin wants, her dad, and I've just described to you how to get all of them. Now, as a reminder, the little girl needs the real ones because she's trying to learn real magic. Give her just three of these books instead of five and you're good to go. Once you've given her the books, you can leave the house, go to the nearby camp, progress time a little bit, go back to the little girl, and she's gone nuts. It turns out she wasn't allowed to learn magic because she's really powerful. All you need to do is chase her around so that she runs out of magic, and then once she's run out, you need to jump up over to her and grab her. With that, she'll come out of her kind of rage and the old woman will thank you for helping. Go back to the campfire and rest again and you can go see the little girl who's recovered. The grandma has agreed to actually teach her because clearly she needs it and she's very grateful. You'll get a mage staff out of the deal and then she'll actually teach you the sorcerer teaching from Meteon. Also, straight after that, the old woman will come speak to you. She's so grateful you helped the little girl with magic that she teaches you the mage's master teaching. So two here at the price for one. Somewhat complicated there, but I hope I gave you all the detail to make that as easy as possible. Next up then, we have the Mystic Spearhand, and this one's really simple. The Mystic Spearhand's master teaching is Wild Fury, which unleashes this combo of attacks with you and a magical illusion. If you spam the button, you get to do extra attacks until you eventually end the combo with that spin slam. However, this consumes 
a lot of stamina to do, but is incredibly effective DPS. Now, as I explained for the Fighter Master teaching, you progress the main story, and eventually you're asked to go check on Melv. When you return to Melv when you're asked to do that, a dragon is attacking it, this poisoned one. And this new character, Sigurd, is there helping fight the dragon. Deal enough damage, the dragon runs away, and Sigurd's really pleased with you, and he teaches you the Mystic Spearhand vocation. But we need him to like us a lot more to actually teach us the Master teaching. To do that, you're going to need to come southwest. Of Bak Patal is the desert city, heading southwest along the main road, you cross off and cross a bridge over a ravine where we start to work our way through Worm's Blood Forest, eventually reaching Dragon's Breath Tower. At Dragon's Breath Tower, you'll be met with Sigurd who wants to help you hunt the dragon, and it appears to be that same poison dragon from earlier, eventually getting to the fourth and fifth floor where we fight the dragon for true. Just defeat the dragon, and it's not that hard of a fight. Sigurd will be so impressed with you that he'll teach you the master's teaching on the spot. So not too hard in concept, but you will need to get relatively far in the game to do it. Okay, next up we have the Magic Archer. The Magic Archer's master's teaching is Martyr's Bolt. You file this ridiculous shot of many bolts, but it costs your maximum health to do, at least temporarily. The more charged up shots you do for this, the more health it's going to cost. It's a very strong skill, even if it's quite sacrificial. It's going to be up to you whether you think that's worth using. To get that master's teaching, it's basically the same way you unlock the vocation. You need to come to the Wind Walker's home, which, as you can see, is southeast of Bak Patal. You'll need to come down the main path, cross this main route, going through Drabnir's Grotto, a quote-unquote maze, but you just sort of follow a main path going down and eventually come out. It's not complicated. And as you're following this road, you'll bump into a dwarf who needs some wild plants to help him kind of recover his back. You just need to give him three of them. Any wild plant will do. He'll be very grateful and tell you to meet him at his house. Here you'll find the magic archer, which is actually his wife. She does not trust you or like you, but if you offer to escort the dwarf to the nearby springs, she will end up liking you. So do it, escort the dwarf, go to the nearby town, take him to the springs, and she'll reveal that she was actually following you the whole time. She'll be so pleased that you actually were helping that she'll teach you the magic archer vocation on the spot and also the master teaching. So as soon as you get the vocation, you do get the teaching at the same time, which is nice. Next up then, we have the Trickster, which is also another really easy one. The Trickster's master teaching is Dragon's Delusion. It creates an illusionary dragon that can't actually directly deal damage, but it instills fear in enemies and even causes them to trip or flee. This sims absolutely required if you're going to play this vocation, giving you a very direct way to hard CC the enemies. And fortunately, it's very easy to get. You're going to need to come to the Reverend Shrine, which is in the desert region. It's just south of the checkpoint rest town as you cross the border, coming through and around, going to the shrine, or just above Back Batal if you're coming from that way. As you enter the shrine, you'll meet this kind of illusionary oracle. Lose here is not real, but she will speak to you. If you give her 50 gold, she'll tell you something interesting or helpful to do with your main quest. But just by speaking with her, she'll teach you the tricks to vocation. It's kind of random. But obviously, that's not the real Luz. The real Luz is up above you on the roof. So if you go around back to the back left on the north side, there's a ladder. You climb up, go to the front of the shrine up top, and she just sat there. By speaking with her, she'll be like, oh, you saw from my illusion. Well, then you must be a master trickster, or at least you are now. And so she gives you the master teaching. If for some reason this doesn't work for you, just go rest somewhere like a camp or past time, or go unlock the trickster vocation, and then you can come back, and she'll definitely be there at that point if she wasn't already. Finally, we have the Warfarer, which is another really straightforward master teaching unlock. The master teaching is required to actually play this vocation. It is rearmament, which is what's allowing you to swap between weapons and playstyles and vocations. You must have rearmament if you're going to use this vocation, so they give you it as soon as you unlock it. When you come to the volcanic island camp, maybe when you're doing the master archer unlock, you go to the springs. And at the entrance of the springs is a man that's kind of out of alcohol and whining about it. He is the warfarer, and he wants three newt alcohol. It's quite a rare alcohol, but fortunately you can pick up one just on the side in the Windwalker's home where you found the magic archer. In Back Batal, you can go into the Forbidden Magic Research Lab, and down there in one of the rooms, there's a bunch of those Sarian lizards kind of hanging on walls. In there is another newt liquor. And on the way to the palace, on this road here at the kind of crossroads, is a suspicious looking guy. If you speak to him, you can pay him to buy one new alcohol. And with all three in hand, you can return to the warfarer and give all three to him. He'll be very pleased and immediately teach you the vocation 
and of course give you the master teaching as it's so important to the vocation. But there you have it. That is all of the vocations and their master teachings, where they are, how to get them, and any bonus information I could provide. I hope this look at all of the different teachings gives you an idea of what you actually want to go for, and you have all the info you need. If it was helpful, please do drop a like. We've obviously put a lot of work into it. But for now, I've been Hollow, you've been you, and thanks for watching. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye